welcome uh, it's another great time anytime i have my life it's about very important issues and welcome to another great broadcast today i'm going to be talking about something that is affecting all of us and affecting doctors in our society i'm going to be having a great guest quickly if they can join me uh, where we'll be talking about the kidnapping of doctors because as we speak today uh, Dr. Ganiat Popola is still in the kidnappers den and uh, today the Nigerian Medical Association has decided to go on a strike because of Dr. Ganiat and we are raising awareness as regards this after drum supports whoever has kidnapped dr ganiat uh we must get to the end of the matter and we must uh be able to amplify our voices just like last week i was talking about the plight of nurses and how we can as much as possible you know get them uh what they needed as regards their verification today we are going to talk about doctors because uh the association of resident doctors have gone on strike today and the reason why they've gone on strike is because of the issue of dr ganiat so if we can uh, get them up and running and we can you know get these conversations out there you never know people listen and the good thing about this my platform you'll be surprised a lot of the people of influence in this country are following Rufai Osini. So anytime I make mention of something that is pertinent and that is about a national issue, they respond quickly because they know I do it in good And that's why I do what I do. And uh, I can't wait to be able to ensure that we get a country that that is a lot better. Hello, introduce yourself, doctor. A lot of people are hearing you. And let's talk about what's happening as regards the safety of doctors. Um, I want to thank um, Dr. Rufai Useni for giving us this opportunity um, to express the current situation uh, in regards to the kidnap of our colleague. Um, it's been in a lot of back and forth, um, our colleague, Dr. Ganiat Pupola, was kidnapped on the 23rd of December 2023. Today makes it exactly um, eight months and about uh, nine days that he has been in captivity um, with the kidnappers. There has been a lot of um, back and forth. This issue um, was reported to the Kaduna State Government. It was reported to the National Security Advisor. You know, and we've had a lot of discussion. It may interest you that we've had three National Executive Council meetings to create awareness on this issue. However, we've not been able to seal or feel any tangible impact of government as it regards to this. And that is why the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors has thought it wise to embark on this industrial action. This is a warning strike to clamor and bring to the um, fore the plight of doctors as it regards um, kidnapping of their colleagues. So this is the current situation, sir. Okay, so you said for eight months. What has the police and other authorities said about it? And recently, they just released some 22 doctors kidnapped. You also talked about the fact that you feel that there's a big onslaught against doctors now, that they are prime target for kidnappers. Why is that so? Okay, thank you very much. I will start with the last um, um, question. Um, why the current onslaught on doctors? To be very honest with you, this is a national uh, emerging pandemic. It's quite unfortunate that kidnappers now see doctors as a ready tool um, for their trade. Um, I will give a few reasons uh, based on our interaction with our colleagues that were released. Number one, um, they have this notion generally that doctors are rich. And so there's what they call the kidnap value. 
So the kidnap, every Nigerian has a kidnap value. Uh, along the line, you will know why the kidnap value for doctors uh, is high. Uh, number one, they feel that doctors are rich, and so they can easily um, um, secure the release of the uh, doctors from captivity, you know, with payment of ransom, which is not which is not right. Doctors are not rich. We are not rich. Then secondly, they also feel that um, doctors can mass mobilize to be able to contribute funds to be able to secure relief of um, kidnapped colleagues. You know, so that's another reason why doctors are, are also being targeted. Then the third reason is that now from our colleagues that we are released, we were made to understand that they were made to do a lot of, you know, work in the camp. Like one of my colleagues that was released in in um, in Benway, um, reported that. Like, are you moved to the mic? You are moving away from your mic. Please come to the mic so we can hear you. He was even made to become a, a, a medical officer and he was made to write prescription. Stop. Please, please come to the mic. I can't hear you. He was made to write prescription, you know, in the camp. So the they keep doctors. Hello. I'm with you. Go ahead. Just keep speaking. Oh. So they keep doctors to do all sorts of jobs in the town. You know, this um, national race, once they are wounded, once they are wounded, they are not, um, they, they find it difficult to be able to assess health care. So what they do is that they try to look for, it's not just doctors, even nurses to provide health care for them in their camps. And another reason, again, is that they need doctors to be able to um, keep um, victims of kidnap, you know, for relatives to be able to pay ransom, because these people need to stay. Take, for instance, the mass kidnapping recently. You will agree with me that we had a lot of diabetics, we had a lot of hypertensive, and these people need to stay alive for ransom to be paid. So not necessarily that they want to kidnap a doctor, but because of the services that the doctor will be able to render. Because if you want to talk to your relative to pay ransom, then your relative needs to be alive. So we interacted with one of our colleagues that was released and how he was making a prescription. And before you know these kidnappers, we get this um, prescription, you know? And so these are some of the few reasons why the target is currently on doctors. And this has national implications. When we are crying of shortage of doctors in our hospital, when we are crying that doctors are traveling abroad, when we are crying of burnout effects on doctors, when we are crying of overwork, overload on doctors, now we are now battling with targeted kidnapping or medical doctors. As I talk to you, if you will permit me, I will share a document of all of the doctors that are currently in captivity all across different camps in Nigeria. As we talk to you right now, a doctor has been kidnapped in Lokoja. Really? Now, As you speak uh, now? Yes, a doctor has been kidnapped in Lokoja, sir. Yes, right now. Okay, can, can, you, can you share that document with me and also Impossible share. How many doctors are in captivity across the country as we speak? All right. So I will share a document with you now, right away, so that you will see the. I am. I am sharing it now. So it is it, just a, a a short statistics of the current uh, of the doctors that are in captivity. Um, some that were killed, some that are still alive. You know and. Let me also give you one information again, sir, that, um, you know, doctors are kept in captivity longer than every other person. How can we be, hello, sir? Yes. How can somebody be kept in captivity for eight, eight months? If you take your WhatsApp handle, I just share this document. Yes. You know, is there. Yeah. Uh, so how can somebody be kept in captivity for eight months? What are you doing? Is it is not a vacation? 
So it, it will impress you that we will pay ransom two, three, four times without even being released. So there is a reason. No, Wait, can, can, you, can you tell me how many doctors that you have paid ransom for? You guys have had to crown for. for. Well, what goes on? Maybe Why? the police said in the case of this uh, medical doctor that they released, they didn't pay any ransom. Uh, sir, well, uh, to be very honest, uh, that is not true. That is not true. Uh, we may not be able to give some information right now so that we don't further worsen our colleague, but that information you gave is not true, sir. And to be very honest, it's better to believe the family than this security person because we know that security person are averse to payment of ransom. But you want to see your family member back hale and hearty, you know? So people do a lot because how long are you going to wait for government? They say don't pay ransom and there's no tangible effort. So how long are you going to wait? If, if, do you think Dr. Popola's husband is a very senior military person? So you will understand with me that money is not the issue. Ransom have been paid. So you need the military. You wait, need wait, 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 wait. As, as, as any ransom we pay concerning Dr. Popola, she's not still been released yet. Yes, yes, sir. Ransom has been paid, sir. 40 million was paid, sir. 40 and did he still million release, was paid. Sir? Yes. Let me give you another information, sir. 40 million was paid. Um, the kidnapper said there was a lot of issue because in eight months there were a lot of back and forth. Now, what happened was the, that the kidnappers, because Dr. Kupala's husband is a military person, so um, they had gone ahead to um, threaten the community that was hosting these kidnappers and you know, the, the money that was paid, kidnappers, they used it to settle, um, you know, um, there were a lot of issues, like I said, uh, to, cows were killed, you know, because of the fracas that they assume. So they say the 40 million that was paid was used to settle, you know, those people that their cows were killed and that they needed another um, um, 40 million again for the release, which has not been forthcoming. Because the initial target was for 70 million. So, but we do not believe that funds is the matter here. You understand? Because, no, for other kidnapping that we know, once you pay the so they release you. You know? But this, no, if you look at document, sir, so a professor of stroke medicine, a foremost professor of stroke medicine in Nigeria, Professor Ekanen Phillips, was kidnapped on. 13th July 2023 in Calabar, in her hospital, in the clinic. You can find out about that. We made a lot of move, uh, move all to no avail, Professor Ekan and Philip. Up till now, we don't know whether she's alive. We don't know whether she has died. So in spite of the document I said, she's a professor of stroke medicine. She's a neurologist. You know, and we don't even have as many of these uh, uh, professors of stroke medicine, not even to talk about uh, specialists of stroke medicine in Nigeria. So you can see that this list I sent to you, this manpower is enough to man three, four teaching hospitals in Nigeria to be able to provide excellent healthcare services to Nigerians. But what is the situation? They are held in bondage across different captivity camps in Nigeria. And this is why we said, no, please, Nigerians should not take it personal. And since um, uh, doctors are no, doctors are no more special than anybody. We are all Nigerians. But for crap, somebody must stand up and talk. We talk about cheap girls. We can't beat our chest to say all of these girls have been released up till now. For how long are we going to keep quiet? So we understand the pain and the difficulty that Nigerians are going to go through this period. But the earlier attention is drawn to this anomaly, the better. Otherwise, this is going to live with us for a very long time. So the doctors, the, the, the resident doctors have gone on strike today because of all of this, right? They've gone on warning yes, strike. The resident doctors have gone on strike. Um, is a warning strike. And seven days have been given to government to step up 
action as far as insecurity in the healthcare system is concerned and insecurity in Nigeria as a whole. If nothing is done, we are going to reconvey again and further decisions will be taken. But for now, across all the centers in Nigeria, resident doctors have gone on strike, sir. Tell me, you said you mentioned names of the doctors in captivity. So, what are the security forces been able to do to get these people out? At least they got some of the new ones out that we are celebrating today. What have they been able to do? Okay, thank you so very much, sir. I, I was on Channels TV on the nineteenth of August, um, twenty twenty-four, to um, clamor for this and. Thank you very much. You posted my video. Arising from that effort, the 20 medical students that were on their way for a conference. This is this annual conference that we have. So from Joss and Dugri, they had entered one vehicle and then they were abducted. You know, point out our widespread um, clamoring, government had stepped into the matter. And it will interest you that within six days of captivity they were released on harm so it is to tell you that if government really wants to go after this thing they have the capacity to do this and today i just send you a video of two of the medical students saying thank you to um to the uh, uh, Oseni, uh, thank you to Chinese television. And this is the kind of approach, proactiveness. Now, um, a former AIG, Wilson in Alegu, was also in the studio. And he recommended that as soon as kidnapping is done, it is easier and better for government to step in. The longer you wait, the more complicated it becomes. So, our, our clamor and requests to government right now is that we. We believe in the IGP, we believe in the military, and we know if they come out sincerely, you know, to commit themselves, Dr. Ghania Spokola and every other person who's been held in captivity will be released. So we want to see action. But most of the times, when you interact with them, they say they are classified information, they are security information, they will not be able to release some of this information, and nothing is done. But the ones that you see, because the case, take for instance the case of Otuko, we saw helicopters eventually, you know, being mobilized to the community, the radius of where these people are being held. We saw um, helicopters, we saw security personnel along the line. Initially, there were no mobilization. But when the, the clamor became so intense, you know, military mobilized. I want to thank the inspector general of police, you know, for this effort. I want to see this effort reproduce in all the cases of kidnap being held across because we believe if they sincerely show commitment, even these cheap people that we are talking about, they will be released. But mind you, when you wait longer than necessary, these people are being moved here and there. So the longer you wait, the more complicated it becomes. Hmm. Okay. So how many, apart from Dr. Ghaniad, now how many doctors are in captivity? <laughs> Plus, the one you said was just kidnapped today in Kogi State. How many doctors are in captivity as we speak? Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we're just trying to connect with him uh, so we can get uh, him back. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, sir, it will be difficult to give these exact statistics, okay. you know, as in currently. But the one I send is the one who have been able to collect information you know, documented information. But as I speak to you, we have about 32 of our colleagues known to us that are currently in captivity. And this does not have to do with the ones that have died, you know, that's the document I just sent to you. But to be very honest, it will be difficult, you know, to exactly say what is the true position as it is right now, 
but uh, documents available from our secretariat was just I just sent to you. Okay, so you should yeah, and that covers for 2021 up to 2024. Okay, okay. So you are calling on the government to do more as regards protection and the welfare of doctors, so that they, they stop getting kidnapped, and there should be security, so that we should be able to look for the ones that have been kidnapped, and so that we can bring the perpetrators of this injustice to book rights. Yes, sir. And prompt intervention, prompt intervention, because you know this issue is going to be there with us. We've also um, um, talked to our colleagues to also be security conscious. Now, sir, it will interest you to know that. Let me also give you another instance because I may not have opportunity to talk again. Um, sir, before now, we used to have a security post in government hospitals where. You know, you have a, a police post, you have a police person, pe personnel to man some of these um, hospitals, you know. But unfortunately, all of these, they've been withdrawn. If they can post police to bank to guide money, why can't they post police to hospitals and other government institutions? Because the fundamental um, duty of government is security of life and property and all government institutions. So if they are sending police to bank, to guide bank, what is the big they sending police big to, 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 to hospital and other government institution? Sir, it will also interest you to know that if this kidnapping of medical personnel that we are talking about, it's not just that a medical personnel was walking on the highway and was kidnapped. Dr. Ganyat Pukola was kidnapped in the quarters in broad daylight in at a national eye care center, Kaduna, during working hours. You know, she just left the clinic and went home, and then she was picked up right inside the hospital. That is a federal government um, um, facility. Uh, Professor Ekan and Philip was kidnapped in her clinic. So you see. See that this at attempt is not just that these people were, you know, this is kidnapping in broad daylight at duty points. And we see a lot of strange people in the hospital. They come to, you know, verify people's identity and then they follow you up. So this proactive measures must be put in place. Hospitals must be secured intentionally so that doctors and other health workers and other Nigerians can be protected. Thank you, sir. More securities in the hospital. More security. Yes, more securities in the hospital. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. One thing is going is that I'm also part of this free Dr. Ganiat quest. So we keep repeating it as much as possible. This interview, thank God for Instagram has been recorded, is going to, you know, go across many other platforms so that we can constantly put the conversation on. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us today. Bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you for having me, sir. Thank you so much. And for nurses out there, please nominate a representative that will come and speak on how difficult it is for nurses and I think pharmacies to get their uh, verification from the councils here. I talked about that topic last week, but I didn't have anybody that was coming up to speak. So that's why I didn't continue with it. Thank you guys so much. Bless you all.